persuaded to sign up for the CIA. Speaks uh, six or seven languages and is learning Farsi right now. Um, currently, she is the Vice President for Research and Analysis at the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C. Please, Santa Barbara, welcome very warmly Claire Lopez. Thank you, Tom, for that wonderful introduction. And thanks to all of you for being out here today. Um, what an absolutely lovely spot um, to talk about such a sober topic, but maybe it'll help looking out at the beautiful scenery here. Um, we're here today because our leadership, President Barack Obama, Secretary of State John Kerry, are negotiating with Iran over a deal that would tackle Iran's nuclear weapons program, supposedly. Now, the problem before us is that the Islamic Republic of Iran is run by a group of clerics, mullahs, kept in power by the guns of the IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and they believe they are very faithful, practicing Muslims. They, they believe that they are. Now, unfortunately, according to Islamic law, which they follow quite closely, if you look at the Constitution of Iran, it is obligatory for Muslims to lie to non-Muslims if the objective to be achieved is likewise obligatory as would be the acquisition of a deliverable nuclear weapons system for Iran. So right off the bat, we've got our leadership negotiating with a leadership of Iran that believes its religious duty is to lie to us. What could go wrong? So from the very beginning of Iran's nuclear weapons program, which began in the 1980s under the Ayatollah Khomeini, the program was kept clandestine. It was secret for about 14 years, until the year 2002, when the Iranian opposition group, the National Council of Resistance of Iran, blew the lid off the program publicly in some press conferences with imagery from satellites and, and other information. And at that point, the world began to realize that the Iranian regime was going for a nuclear bomb. Now, Iran, like the United States, is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. That's a treaty that basically was set up by the United Nations in order to share electric production power uh, by means of nuclear uh, power. Um, and to share that technology among states in the world who would in return for getting that technology, promise never to, to uh, go for technology that would give them a nuclear bomb. Well, we found out 14 years or so after they began their program that Iran had been lying and violating the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. There weren't any very serious consequences, but the IAEA, that's the International Atomic Energy Agency, it's the UN's monitoring agency for nuclear programs under the NPT, as we call it, began to investigate some of these sites that had been revealed. And those sites very quickly became uh, open and uh, show places. But at the same time, the actual Iranian nuclear weapons program moved literally underground. It moved into mountains, under bunkers, tunnels, uh, and was dispersed around the country. It's a very mountainous country, as you may know, and there are lots of places that are very suitable for digging these, these different facilities underground, and that's what they did. And the Western powers, we call it the P5 plus one. P5 refers to the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. The plus one is Germany. Those are the negotiating powers along with the IAEA together with Iran that have come up with this disastrous deal that Tom has just mentioned, the JCPOA, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Now, that negotiation process began, what else, in secret, between the United States of America, John Kerry, then Senator John Kerry, and the 
head, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, began these talks in secret in 2011 using Oman, the country of Oman, as a, uh, a location for, uh, the, 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 the Sultan of Oman was the mediator for the talks. They went on in secret. We didn't even bother to tell our closest ally in the Middle East and the number one target in the Middle East for Iran's nuclear weapons program, Israel, about the talks. Israel had to find out from Saudi Arabia. That's how they found out. So the talks went on for these several years, and we have now arrived at this so-called agreement that was reached in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, back in July of this year, 2015. What's in the deal? The deal says, okay, you can keep enrichment. You can keep your entire nuclear weapons infrastructure. You don't have to take anything apart. You don't have to dismantle anything. You don't have to get rid of anything. You get to keep all your centrifuges. You get to keep all of your enriched uranium, but you're supposed to dilute it down a little bit, make it less usable for a nuclear bomb. You get to keep all of your uh, plutonium producing facility at ARAC, which you heard Tom talk about. Uh, you're just going to swap out the core somehow and make it less ready to produce plutonium to make a bomb. Uh, they get to keep all of their ICBMs, that's intercontinental ballistic missile. The intercontinental part, that's not for Israel. They've got short range and medium range missiles for Israel. Intercontinental, that's for us. They get to keep all those, that's not even on the table. They get to do research on more and better, faster centrifuges while they keep all of the centrifuges they currently have, they just have to unplug some of them. And the two secret side deals, gotta mention this. Two congressional members uh, went over to the IAEA in Vienna in July, late July, and uh, they found out that there are two secret side deals to this bigger deal. And the secret side deals say, well, uh, Iran and the IAEA have come to an agreement and you don't have to reveal all the prior nuclear work that you were doing, that bomb work. Uh, you, you don't have to talk about that, you don't have to reveal that, come clean on that. And also, by the way, if you want to collect your own samples, you know, you, you just go right ahead and you, you get your own samples. Please televise it for us, you know, take a video. Um, and uh, you can submit that to the IAEA and, and that'll be good enough. We'll, we'll you know. Lance Armstrong takes his own urine samples kind of thing. Oh, this, is, this works. So these, this is the deal. They keep all of this. And this is only a legitimization by the international community of Iran's overt nuclear weapons program. This paves the way through the 10 or 15 years or so of the agreement to them being able to break out at the end of that time with all the newer, faster, better centrifuges, everything that they're doing, but they have to keep it on hold for 15 years. This doesn't even address the covert nuclear weapons program, the one that I said went under the tunnels and the bunkers and the, the tunnels under, under the mountains. Doesn't even address that. Not even on the table for discussion. They don't have to talk about the military dimensions to this deal. What else do they keep? I really want to mention this before I finish. And that is they get to keep four American citizen hostages that you just heard Tom talking about. One of them is a Christian pastor. His name is Saeed Abedini. He's in jail in, in Iran because he's a Christian. Former US Marine, his name is Amir Hekmati. The former bureau chief of the Washington Post in Tehran, his name is Jason Rezaian. And he was recently put on a show trial, of a kangaroo court of a show trial. We don't know the outcome of that quite yet. And then the fourth person is the former FBI agent, Robert Levinson, held for many years now. We should not even be talking to this regime until our four American citizen hostages are home safe and sound. So this is, the, this is, this is where we are right now. A deal, a negotiating set, a system sequence, with a regime that believes it is their faith-driven obligation to lie to us, a regime that has never, ever since the 1980s not had a clandestine secret nuclear weapons program, a regime that is dedicated to terror and has told us they will use the released frozen funds, which amount to maybe 100, 150 billion, and also sanctions relief money, to continue funding terrorism around the region 
uh, geopolitical aggression and jihad. They've said that that's what they're going to do with the money. This is who we're negotiating with. This is where we get the JCPOA. Please, if you have any uh, potential, any opportunity, talk to your congressional members. They are in recess right now. They are back in their districts talking through the month of August until after Labor Day. Tell them when they go back to Congress and they vote in middle of September, dump this deal. Stop Iran now. Turn down the deal. Vote against it. Thank you very much. No mention of the 24 days to hide stuff. Something like it, but I don't remember her saying how Iran is able to hide stuff for 24 days. Anyway, still think that uh, thing in the White House is a genius? If he is, he's working for the enemy. He's working for the enemy.